Okay, so this is just a quick video to take you through what an IPSO or IPSO chart is and why it's useful. So an IPSO chart can help you think about how to represent an algorithm. So it's a tool that we can use to help us think about how to represent an algorithm before we actually draw a flow chart or write some pseudocode or write some Python code. So what you do when you create an IPSO chart is you list the inputs to the algorithm, the processes that are taking place as part of the algorithm, the uh, data that the algorithm is storing, and the outputs from the algorithm. And you list those in a table with four sections like this. Okay, so I'm just going to take you through an example of how to do this now. And we've got this example here. A company has several employees who earn different amounts for the hours that they work. The company needs an algorithm that calculates their total salary. So what we need to think about first of all, I like to think about the inputs and the outputs of the algorithm first of all. Um, the outputs of this algorithm then, uh, the algorithm needs to calculate their total salary. So uh, what we need to uh, know from the algorithm when it runs is uh, the total uh, salary that the employee earns. So that's going to be our output. Okay, so our output is the employee's total salary. Let's think about our inputs. So uh, we're going to have two different inputs for this algorithm. One of them uh, we need uh, to uh, work out what the employee's total salary is, is uh, the number of hours that they uh, worked because um, they might have full-time or part-time employees, they might have employees that work different numbers of hours. So we need to know what the number of hours that they work uh, is in order to work out what the total salary uh, they earn is. So we need to know the number of hours that the employee worked, that's our first input. Secondly, uh, we have another input that we need before we can uh, work out what the total salary is. And uh, that's going to be the rate of pay per hour. So we need to know what, uh, how much money this uh, employee earns per hour in order to calculate their uh, total salary. So we're going to write that in. So we need to know the employee's rate of pay per hour. Let's look at the processes that take place in our algorithm uh, next. So for this algorithm, there's just going to be the one process that's uh, taking place, and that's going to uh, be calculating the total uh, salary. So once we've taken in uh, the number of hours that the employee worked and the rate of pay uh, the employee earns per hour, we need to use those uh, that data to uh, calculate their total salary. Okay, so we've uh, our process is that we are going to use the data that we've taken in to calculate the uh, total salary. Finally, let's look at what data we are storing, and uh, the good place to start for this is to look at the inputs because whatever we're going to uh, take in, we're going to have to uh, store. So uh, we're going to store the number of hours that the employee worked. And uh, we're also going to store the rate of pay per hour. So we've taken those things in as uh, inputs, so we're going to need to store them to be able to do anything with them. So we're adding those to our uh, storage section of our IPSO chart. Uh, but that's not the only uh, data that we need to store. We also need to store the result of our process. So uh, we said uh, just a moment ago that the, we needed to calculate the total salary that the employee earns. Uh, in order to output that to the user, we need to store the uh, value that we've calculated. So I'm going to add that to our list of things that we're going to store. Okay, and that's uh, our list of things that we need to store for this algorithm. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to uh, complete an IPSO uh, chart. And completing one of these will help you to uh, think about uh, the uh, inputs, the outputs, the processes that are taking place in the algorithm and the things that you need to store uh, for, uh, to write to, for a particular algorithm. 
and uh, that should help you to uh, then create flowcharts, pseudocode and uh, Python code for a particular algorithm.